please open your Bibles, if you don't mind, to the book of Luke, chapter number one. In the next maybe half an hour or so, Luke, chapter number one, and verse number five downwards. Luke, chapter one, Luke, the doctor, Luke, chapter number one, verse five. He is also the author of this book, plus the book of Acts. Are you there? Say amen. 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 I want us to read from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse number 5. I'm reading from the King James Version. The Bible says this, there was, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and, his na and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Verse 7 says, And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass now that when he executed the priestly office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot, whose lot, Zachariah's lot, was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Verse number 10. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thy prayer For thy prayer is heard. Somebody's prayer is hard today. Hallelujah. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy just lift your voice and just bless his name God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Bible says in verse 14, And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Father, we give you praise and glory and honor. 
because of your word this morning. Amen. I want to share briefly from the word of God this morning. Fear not. Your prayer is hard. Fear not. Your prayer is hard. I don't know who has been praying here, but I feel such a strong conviction from yesterday evening. The Lord is saying that your prayer is hard. It's been a long time praying. You've prayed for so long. It's been difficult. But the word I have in my spirit is the Bible says that fear not. Your prayer has been hard. Somebody say amen. Turn to neighbor and say neighbor. Fear not. Your prayer has been hard. Next neighbor say neighbor. Fear not. Your prayer has been hard. You can take your seats in God's presence in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know, waiting is one of the most difficult things in life. Waiting is difficult. It's hard. Very hard to wait. Very difficult to wait. In fact, the other day I remember I was there. I'd gone to the shop, you know, and I'd gone to do some shopping. So I got to the supermarket. I'd forgotten it is end month. So I was there with my car, waiting to get into some parking slot to go into the supermarket and do some shopping. So I'm there. It was less than 15 minutes, but it looked like a lifetime because you're there waiting and waiting and looking and, you know, just waiting because once guys enter the supermarket, they take so long to do shopping, it's end of month. So you can expect many people there, the cars are all jammed, all the parking spaces are all taken. And so you're there waiting and waiting and waiting. But after a few minutes, like 15, 20 minutes like this, somebody walked out of the supermarket with his basket full of groceries and went to his car and then he dropped those things in his car and then was leaving. Thank God it was just next to where I had parked waiting to go in. So I'm just indicating, you know, to just go in. And I'm there. And the guy, the guy just reversed nicely. And so I'm there, just waiting patiently, like a man of God, to enter. Lo and behold, somebody from nowhere. Those who drive can understand what I'm talking about. Somebody from nowhere just came from nowhere and just zoomed and just took that space. And I'm thinking, this guy, you know, I, I was so disappointed, I was so discouraged, and I'm thinking, surely, this guy, when he, th he thinks I'm a stone, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, I was so disappointed, you know, I'm just there, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm looking at this guy, I'm thinking, surely, surely, sincerely, and the guy parked there and walked out and went to the supermarket to go and do his shopping. I'm there, still indicating to go in. Who am I talking to? Who, who, who? <laughs> And I'm there and I'm thinking, you know, in a minute I thought, is there, is there a way I can show this man that I'm upset? What can I do? I almost thought of going to get his, you know, air out of his wheel. I just tell those young boys there, deflate kidogo to toy and new man belly. I actually thought, is there a way, is there a way? But while I was thinking, I heard a voice, hey, pastor, pastor. <laughs> Pastor, man of God, man of God. It's not easy to be a pastor. Oh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Have you been in a season whereby you have been waiting and, and waiting and waiting? Maybe waiting for, maybe it's an interview that you has been scheduled and it is taking long to take place or it's a job that you have been asking God to open a door for you or it, it is maybe a scholarship or it's probably, you know, maybe it's a child that you've been trusting God to have and you've been waiting and you've been waiting and you've been waiting. Or it could be a brother who has been waiting and trusting God to get the right partner or a sister. You've been waiting and you've been waiting and you've been praying and praying and praying and, and, and nothing seems to be happening. I discovered just... From this experience, I discovered something. I discovered, child of God, that sometimes when we wait for so long for something or for someone for so long, 
What happens? We start getting options in our minds. We start thinking of plan B. You wait for so long, you get tired, and you think, what else can I do? What other option is there? Let me tell you, after that, when I got so discouraged, I drove off, I said, I'll just buy groceries for today, for tonight. The rest will buy the other day. It's okay. It's not a must. When you wait for so long, sometimes, you start getting other ideas and other options. And sometimes it cannot be a good thing. Sometimes a bad thing. That's what happened to Abraham in the Bible. God promised Abraham a child. And he says, I'm going to bless you. With you, I'm going to bless you. But what happened? Abraham waited for how long? For, more, for 25 years for the promise of God to be revealed and to fulfill. He waited not for one year or for two years, not for 10 years or 20 years. For 25 years, he is waiting for the fulfillment of the promise of God in his life. It never seemed to be happening. And so he said, let's do this. Let's, 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 let's look for another option. Let's, let's fulfill this purpose of God using Haggai. And so the Bible says that Abraham went into Haggai and the got a child called Ishmael. Because of waiting for so long, he got another option. Look at this man of God, well, called King, Sam, King Saul. Because one time King Saul was prepared to go to war. Remember the book of First Samuel, First Samuel? He's preparing to go to war. And so what is happening, it, it is custom that the priest had to over sacrifice before they would go to war. So King Saul is waiting for the priest who is Samuel to come and to offer sacrifice and to release them into go to war. And so King Saul waits and he waits and he waits until he gets tired. What happens? He, he, he said, let me offer the sacrifice to God myself. He did what was designed not for him to do because he waited and he waited and he got tired. And he opted for something else which was detrimental. And that marked the beginning of the downfall of King Saul. Sometimes, sometimes you can wait for so long until you start getting options. You can wait for so long to get married until you think after all, just come, we stay. That's what happens. You wait and you wait and you wait and you get tired. Have you waited for so long? You've been so faithful in the place of faithfulness in God and you see your peers just rising and disappearing. Rising and disappearing. And you're there faithfully waiting on God to open a door. But what you, do, what, what you don't know is that those guys are using other means to rise up. And so the enemy whispers to you, say, how long will you be here? Take the other option. How long will you wait upon God to open this door for you? Try this other option. And many times we've entered into deals, we've entered into places. Why? Because we have waited and we have waited and we have waited. There is no response. What happens? We take a shortcut. May that not be a portion today. May God give you grace and patience to wait upon him. Hallelujah. I also realize when you wait sometimes for so long, your expectation disappears. Have you waited for something for so long until now some ah take kuja kuja sasa? Two weeks ago, I remember we had a blackout in our place. Two, for a whole week we had no steamer. A whole week. You know, blackouts in our place, they go for one day or maybe some few hours, they come back. But this time around, it took off on a Monday. So we knew, okay, it's okay. Maybe in the course of the day, it akuja. It never came that whole day. The following day, ah, the third day, ah. So I'm a bit spoiled, kidogo too. So me, when I go to shower, there's that, they call instant shower. So you press a button and hot water comes and you shower. But now we realize there's no electricity. So we took the other option. Nikanza ku, washa jiko maka, unachemsha maji. Eh? by, you know I kept on saying electricity is coming day one, day two day three, day four by day five I said 
is okay. Hata nimezoea. It is okay. Tumejikumbusha how we used to wash eh, from the bucket. You can get to a place in life whereby nothing moves you because you have waited and you have waited and you have waited and some sasa ikikuja ikuje isipokuja pia ni sawa. Expectations were zero. You don't even expect to have a good life anymore. Umeongoja, you have waited, you have waited until you're tired. This is what happened to Zachariah and Elizabeth. Where we just read in Luke chapter 1 and from verse 4, 5 all the way down. Bible begins by telling us in the days of King Herod. This is when... This is the days where they were expecting the birth of the Messiah. The Bible says there was a king called King Herod. And in those days, this is the king that was pursuing Jesus. When Jesus was born, and because his kingdom felt threatened, so he pursued to kill Jesus. But when he didn't find Jesus, he ordered that all the children, infants, would be killed. The Bible says in those days, in those days, there was a man called Zechariah. And this man had a wife called Elizabeth. That word, that name Zachariah, I checked. It means remembered by Jehovah. Hallelujah. Man of God, you're blessed. Burudi, you have been remembered by Jehovah. Hallelujah. Zachariah. Bible says that there was a man called Zachariah. And had a, had a, a wife called Elizabeth. The Bible says that Zach Zachariah was not only just anybody. He was a priest in the house of God. And Elizabeth was not just any woman, any wife. She was a daughter of Aaron. In other words, these guys are from a very good family background. The grand grandparents were probably deacons. Or the great-great-grandparents were probably bishops. Of course, from the lineage of Aaron, from Aaron's time. Elizabeth was a daughter of Aaron. So from the days of Aaron all the way down, Elizabeth has appeared. Zachariah is a priest. That means these guys are from a very good, holy, righteous background. Not only that, the Bible says that they themselves, Zachariah and Elizabeth, them themselves had a testimony from heaven. The Bible says that these guys, they were walking in the commandments of God. They walked in the laws of God. They walk to fulfill the ordinances of God. And so Zechariah and Elizabeth loved the Lord. They were priests. They were man and woman of God. They served God faithfully. But there's a problem. The Bible says that they were barren. So are you saying that it's possible to serve God, to be committed in the house of God, and be barren. I leave that for you to decide. But the Bible says that they served God. They were committed in the house of God. They were faithful in discharging their assignment in the house of God. But they were barren. Or rather, Elizabeth was barren. And let me remind you, child of God, barrenness in those days, in those days, was considered as a curse. Anyone who was barren, it meant that God was displeased with them. And so God shut their womb so that they would not be able to propagate. No other person would come from their lineage because God was as upset with them. And so anyone that was barren was walking with shame and disgrace. Anyone who was barren was not somebody to talk about. Bible says that children are a reward from the Lord. And so if you are not children, it's like there's something wrong with you. Barrenness is basically not the ability of not having children. And so can you imagine, I'm just trying to picture this. Just imagine with me. These are priests. These are men that are serving God. This is a couple that loves the Lord, have given themselves to God, and they're in the house of God, but they are barren. They are walking in shame. Walking in disgrace. They are laughing stock in the community. Yet, they are in the house of God. And serving God. Faithfully discharging 
their responsibility. What makes it worse is the Bible says that they were, they, 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 she was barren and they were both old. You know, it's one thing, man of God, to be barren and young, you can believe God. But once you're old, it's like you're done and you're dusted. You hang the boots on some ikito to make a funga. Done. These guys were barren and they were old. Very old. At some point when the angel appeared to Zachariah, he says, in fact, it's like he's reminding the angel, you know, we are so old. What you're saying doesn't look that makes sense. We are so old. But the Bible says, and I like the Bible says that one day when Zachariah entered into the temple and he was discharging his responsibility, an angel appeared to him. Hallelujah. Somebody say one day. One day. Somebody say one day. One day when Zechariah was in the temple and discharging his responsibility, he was doing what he was meant to do. He got a visitation. And guess what? This visitation happened where? It happened in the house of God. It happened in the temple. It happened when he was on assignment. There was a shift of his life. Let me declare to somebody here today that all that God needs in your life is just a moment. And because you came to church today, let me declare to you that in Jesus' name, because you are in the house of God today, you are in the church of God today, it just takes a moment of God for your life to completely change. It doesn't matter how long you have been where you have been, how long you've suffered what you've suffered, how long you prayed those prayers, it just needs a moment huh? and everything can just flip to the other side. Somebody say amen. It just takes a day for your status to change. It takes a day for your finances to change. It takes a day for your dream to come alive. It takes a day for faith to be kindled in your life. May that day be today in Jesus' name. May that day be today in your life in Jesus' name. I don't know what you came to do today, but I declare in the name of Jesus by the Holy Ghost today, may that day become today. May your life begin to turn around today. Today, in the name of Jesus, it just took a day, a day, just a day. All God needs is just a day to flip that story and to flip that script. Amen. And that day is today. Hallelujah. When I was praying yesterday about this message, I felt, you know, the Bible says that the angel of God spoke to Zechariah and he told him, according to the time of life, you shall be able to have a child. Uh -huh. And the Bible says that before you leave the temple, there will be a sign. And that sign will be that you shall not be able to speak. The process began before he left the temple. The signs began. Well, I don't know how long it would take. But let me say to you, child of God, the process of answered prayer will begin before you leave this assembly today. In the name of Jesus. The moment you walked out of the temple, it was confirmed because you could not speak just like the angel said. And if you believe the word of God, receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear not, your prayer is hard. I just came to talk to somebody this morning, just to encourage you this morning. Fear not, your prayer has been hard. Whatever it is you've been praying for, I know you've been praying for a long time. But the message I hear in my heart is fear not, fear not, fear not, your prayer is hard. By the time you leave this meeting today, there will be a conviction, there will be a sign that your prayer is heard. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to give you three quick things. There's three quick things 
that I get from this text. There are many more things, but for today's service, just three quick things as the Lord enables us, just that can be able to help us while we are waiting for the manifestation of this answered prayer. While we are waiting, what can we do? We can learn from what happened in the book of Luke chapter 1 from verse 5 downwards, the story of Zechariah. Yeah? Just few things and then we shall be able to pray in Jesus' mighty name. Number one, child of God, if we are to successfully wait for the manifestation of, of this answered prayer, number one, don't allow life's disappointment to affect your assignment. Don't allow life's disappointment to affect your assignment. Or don't allow life's circumstances to affect your assignment. Zachariah did not allow his condition, his situation, his disappointment to affect his assignment. See what the Bible says in Luke chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. It says this. It says, and it came to pass, Luke 1, 8, 9. It says, and it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God. Imagine this is a barren couple. But they still did not allow their situation to affect their service and their assignment. Every one of us, child of God, we have an assignment. Praise God. We have an assignment. Zachariah, knowing that maybe, you know, after he's gone, nobody else will arise in his, in his, in his household. But that did not deter him. Life was ambiguous. Life was uncertain without children. But that did not deter him from executing his mandate, from doing his assignment that was before him. Praise the name of Jesus. People of God, I know people, I know couples, I know dear, dear, beautiful people, couples that I love the Lord, have given themselves to God, but they have no children. But that has not kept them from serving God. They still serve God. They still honored God. Even in the shame, even in the, you know, the names being called out so that they still kept on serving God. I know them. Even here in church, I know some very lovely, some very beautiful sisters and brothers who when you ask them, they say, well, I've advanced in age, but they're so faithful. I see them here every Sunday ministering before the Lord. Have you seen them? Me, I've seen them. I know them. They are committed in the choir. They are committed in, worship, in, in, in fellowship. They have kept because they don't want to allow their circumstances to affect their assignment. People of God, as you wait for the manifestation of what you've been waiting for, let not circumstances, let not situations, let not disappointments affect your assignment in God. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm just imagining, I, I believe, I believe Zachariah was disappointed. I believe so. He must have been disappointed. Sincerely, I am serving you. I am loving you. I am honoring you. I am a priest with my family. But I have no child. What, what was running through his mind while he's serving? How would it be? How, how does it look? He did not allow that thought to take over his assignment that God had given to him. People of God, we have assignments and sometimes we must rise above what we feel and what we think is right and execute what God says we must execute. Praise God. Sometimes it is, we must rise above what we feel and what we think should happen. And we say, we put God's assignment first, other things follow. That's what Zechariah did. He did not allow his assignment to affect his, his the circumstances to affect assignment. 
I had a friend of mine, a pastor, nice, blessed. I remember growing up, he would walk in Nairobi here, in Nairobi here. He would walk more than two kilometers every Sunday morning to go to church in this mega church, not a small church, a church with almost more than a thousand members. But he would walk from his house and he would walk to church every Sunday morning and he would minister, he would preach, and he would stick around service once it is over and he would walk back home. Not because he was meditating upon the word of God or he was trying to keep fit. He couldn't afford fare to get him a tattoo. 20, Bob, to get to church. But if you look at him on Sunday morning, his shoes were shining. His tie is in place. The man is okay. He would jump up and serve God. He would sweat and give God glory. His circumstance, we came to know later, but I realized that his circumstance did not allow him. He didn't allow his circumstances to do what? To dictate his service for God. People of God, don't allow circumstances. Don't allow disappointments because let me tell you, child of God, disappointments will come. Challenges will come. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, challenges will come and disappointments will come. But let me tell you, child of God, if all of us would put a gloomy face, I like our bishop, our bishop has gone through so much, but he would be here every Sunday with a powerful message. But if you talk to him, he will tell you what has been happening. I'm telling you. How many of us here allow our situations to put us down? Zachariah, he says, no, I won't do that. I will not allow disappointment to put me down. He kept on serving. He kept on serving. My goodness, I have two minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Let me just read for us the other two very quickly. And then we shall be able to get out of here. The second thing, child of God, as you wait for the manifestation of the answer to prayer. Number two, remain selfless. Someone say, remain selfless. Remain selfless. Zechariah remained selfless. Luke chapter 1 verse 9. Bible says, according to the customs of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he, when he went into the temple of the Lord. Let me remind you, Zechariah was a priest. He was what? A priest. And one of the functions of a priest was to stand in the gap for others. He would stand in the gap for nations, stand in the gap for others. And so Zachariah did not allow selfishness because he could not afford selfishness. He had to give himself. Don't allow selfishness. Be a person of others. Serve. Serve. Imagine Zachariah. One of his assignments as a priest was to ordain and was to bless children. Imagine Zachariah has someone has come and said, Man of God, please pray for me. I'm believing God for, you know, for the fruit of the womb. So he lays hands, she gets pregnant. Nine months later, he says, Man of God, your prayers worked. Please bless my baby. Imagine he holds that baby like this and looks at himself and says, Lord, I'm praying for people. They're getting healed. They're getting blessed. Like in Mimini Haji God. Can you just, just imagine with me? Imagine with me. He, you, you, you must be selfless. You are praying for people, and Pastor will tell you the many times, you know, she stands there, she, she also has her own needs and her own challenges. And you come for her to prayer. She prays for you. And then you call her the following day. Woman of God, let me tell you, that prayer, just I'm telling you, doors have opened like nothing. And you know, you go over and say, God, I have just prayed for people. And my, I, Lord, remember me. Remember me, Lord. Hallelujah. We, I remember I had a car, a very nice car, but we had done mileage. Sana. A brother once, once told me, man of God, please, I got a testimony. Believe God for another car. 
But people come and say, oh, pray for me. I believe God for her. And they unleash things and unleash things. But, but mine is I'm saying, Lord Jehovah, when are you going to visit me, Lord? Lord, do something. Say something. But thank God, those cars helped us. Some of those cars, they kept us holy. And they kept us in spirit. Because as you start the car, you know the gearbox is a problem. You start the car, you say, Jehovah, this car must reach. Lord, you're always in prayer because this car can break down any time. And the gauge is always in red. Say, Lord, I release Holy Ghost oil. Let this oil be sufficient to my next destination. I mean, and so you are so spiritual. <laughs> Thank God for those cars. <laughs> But Lord, Lord, while you're blessing others, Lord, Zachariah, I mean, this man had to be selfless. If we are to wait and successfully wait for a miracle and an answer to prayer, we must be selfless. Amen. Hallelujah. And last but not least, due to our time, we must remember that every prayer made in the will of God will always come to pass. It doesn't matter how long it might take. But every prayer made in the will of God, it will come to pass. Luke 1, 13 says this. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is hard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Some commentaries say, that he, this prayer he made Kitambo Sana because now he's old. He actually stopped praying it. Because now he's old. There's no point of praying it. But then he's saying, when you prayed, when you, I don't know when he stopped praying, but he says that this prayer you prayed, it may have taken long, but this prayer you prayed, it has been hard. Amen. God has heard your prayer and he has come to answer. Praise the Lord. Please, beloved, don't stop praying until you get an answer. Don't stop praying until heavens respond. In whichever way, don't stop praying. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.16, it says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus First John chapter 5 and verse 14, 15 says this, and this is the confidence that we have towards him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, then in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request of that which we have asked. Let's rise on our feet. Guess what? After all was said and was done, God opened the womb of Elizabeth. Hallelujah. God opened the womb of Elizabeth after so many years. But finally, God released a blessing in the life of Zachariah and Elizabeth. A blessing that brought joy and celebration and jubilation. Hallelujah. That silenced her critics and silenced her mockers. Let me declare that in Jesus' name, just like Anna, hallelujah. Anna was also barren for many, many years. But when God opened the womb of Anna, hallelujah, the seed that came forth silenced all other sons and all other daughters of Penina. May God open up your womb, whatever it is. Whatever you've been trusting God for, as you wait upon the Lord. Remember, the word for us today is that fear not. Thy prayer has been heard. And as you walk in this word, remember, we must not allow our disappointments to affect our assignments. We must not walk in selfishness. We must remember, every prayer made in the will of God will, must come to manifestation. We must keep on praying. And keep on praying. Lift your hands in a minute and just respond to the word of God. I've just come to encourage you today that your prayer has been heard. 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 Your prayer has been heard in Jesus' name. As we read in the beginning that those that wait upon the Lord, those that wait upon the Lord, those that wait upon the Lord, those who trust in God, those who look unto God, those who hope in God will gain new strength. Uh, they will be renewed in their power. 
they will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like the eagle uh, towards the sun. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and they shall not faint. Uh, in the name of Jesus, my Father and my God this morning, uh, I release grace right now, dear Father, to wait upon you even for an answered prayer. In the name of Jesus, my God, look at your people. Many of us, God, have been praying. I've been waiting upon you. My God, I've been fasting. Uh, and it's been a long time. It's been a long time. But today we refuse, uh, Lord, to allow circumstances uh, to affect our assignment. Uh, we refuse to walk in selfishness. Uh, we refuse to give up in the place of prayer. You're telling us to pray at all times uh, without ceasing, oh God. Uh, let that grace be upon us today. In Jesus' name, uh, we shall pray and pray through. Uh, we shall pray until something happens, oh God. We give you praise and we give you glory. Father, we thank you and we bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we honor you and we bless you.